Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today we're going to look at some bargain input devices from Kmart. I love a bargain. I'm also here to test things out and tell you what I do and don't like and what you might and might not like. So when I was told about a series of Anko gaming products available from Kmart, I wanted to have a look. First up is this 10,000 dpi gaming mouse. It is currently selling for $3, although it was originally selling for $20. I'm not one to spend a lot of money on a mouse. For me, it needs to be comfortable in the hand, smooth on the desk, and have three buttons. But I'm no hardcore gamer. This mouse has so many different settings, it was crazy. Just look at the interface of the software. I can adjust everything, including the colours, the resolution, or DPI, and what all of the buttons do including recording macros for each one, so that one button press on the mouse invokes a series of keyboard commands to the computer, which is really handy when gaming or doing other repetitive functions. The LEDs on this one are quite subtle, mostly just lighting up the two side panels. A quick word about DPI. DPI stands for dots per inch, and simply refers to how many pixels across the screen are moved for one inch of moving the mouse across the desk. At 10,000 dpi, the mouse is skittering across the Windows desktop so fast you can barely work out where it's going at all. In a game though, those frenetic movements can be the difference between winning and virtual death. So I understand the need for higher resolution. And the need to be able to switch dpi on the fly. Because the difference between running and jumping for your life and then finding a nice spot with the sniper rifle requires much more precision and slower movements so that you have pinpoint accuracy and you also want to be able to control the computer when you get back to Windows. So switchable DPI makes good sense. Both of these mouses give you the option to choose the DPI with a button click on the top of the mouse. Physically this mouse seems quite robust and has what seems to be a good solid cable and connector. Only time of course will tell. Next up we have his big brother the 16,000 dpi gaming mouse. This mouse is more or less the same with just a few more options. The first obviously the dpi goes to 16,000 which is really fairly crazy. It also has an ex interchangeable extension panel that will sit on the side and make the mouse a little wider. Though for me for some reason this wasn't as comfortable. I guess that's why they give you the option. The LEDs are also a little more obvious with the two lines down the back of the mouse. Inside the bottom are a series of removable weights, allowing you to tailor the physical feel of the heft of the mouse to your precise needs. Personally, I have a bigger hand and so I prefer all the weights in, giving the whole mouse just a little bit more bulk. The last feature is a fully braided nylon cable that I think will give this mouse some extra longevity. Originally selling for $25, this mouse is now available for just $5 if you can still find it. While we're looking at mouses, it's probably also worth looking at this light up mouse pad. Some people like a mouse pad, some don't care. I can see both sides. If I'm working at my computer all day, it's nice to have something soft to rest your wrist on. It's also great if your desk, like mine, has a join in it just where you want to be able to use the mouse. This one also has pretty lights and adjustable pretty lights too but it's just a common mouse pad and a fairly large one at that, even though it's marked as the small. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a USB hub in the controller. If you're running a USB cable right to the front of where I use my computer all the time, it would be great to be able to plug a couple of USB devices in and might have cost an extra $3 or something next time. If you need a mouse pad, then go for it. But at $16, it's actually more expensive than the two mouses I've just shown you put together. The last two devices are the Amco Gaming Keyboard and the Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Both have pretty LED lights like the mouses, but they're actually very different from each other. The standard $25 keyboard is a great general purpose keyboard. It feels relatively strong and robust, though it does flex a little if I try and bend it. But to be honest, it's designed to use on a flat surface, not as a melee weapon so a little flex really doesn't matter. It's comfortable to type on, the keys have good travel, and it's not too noisy. 
The mechanical keyboard, on the other hand, is much heavier, tougher and more industrial looking. It's also much louder, with the click of the mechanical switches much more evident. I gave them both to my wife Bernie to try, because she's a proper typist, and could give me a fairer review. She said, the mechanical keyboard is very noisy, which in an office environment would just drive your co-workers crazy. But then again, you probably wouldn't use a gaming keyboard at work. Or would you? The actual typing on the mechanical keyboard feels clunky and not as easy to use as the standard gaming keyboard. The mechanical keyboard has good depth, but it feels way too much like an old typewriter for her liking. She preferred the standard gaming keyboard. It was quieter, but still had satisfactory noise and felt gentler on the hands. Less like a typewriter and more like a good keyboard. She also believed she made less errors on the standard gaming keyboard rather than the mechanical keyboard, although it may have just taken some time to get used to it. Other noticeable differences between the two is that the mechanical keyboard has a thick plastic cable, where the standard gaming keyboard has a nylon braided cable. And the standard keyboard has larger, clearer letters on the keycaps, while the mechanical keyboard has industrial looking letters that are cool, but a little bit harder to actually read. Everyone's different. You might prefer one or another. Maybe go and have a look at them and see which one you prefer. None of them are terribly expensive after all. Question of the day. Is it time for a new keyboard and mouse for you? What are you looking for in your input devices? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you thought this video was useful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. There's some older episodes you may not have seen before, here and here. And you can click the subscribe button down here to be notified of all the new episodes as they come out, or click up here to join our mailing list. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.